Greetings, everybody. Chaplain Bob here, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Uh, greetings, Christ is King. Had, this one had a very good question. Uh, this one writes, now forgive me, I don't know if it's if male or female half the time. So, you know, I, I hate to call people he said or something, and then it ends up being a female. And uh, a lot of times females take male names on the nets just so that people don't know who or what they are, which I don't blame them. So, all right, the question is, I'm pretty new to the Bible, and I'm confused why it says in one part, and I quote, For I am come to set a man at variance against his father, and the daughter against her mother, and the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. Unquote. And that was Jesus speaking. And then in other parts it says we are to honor mother and father. Uh, I know this is off topic, but there's nobody else I can ask. So, good question. Really, I, I've never touched on this before, so I'm, I'm glad you mentioned this. Uh, there's two different aspects to this uh, question. There's a physical aspect, our physical parents, and then there's a spiritual aspect, which Christ is our spiritual father, so to speak. So uh, I'm going to quote some scriptures soon, but I'm just going to get a little introduction here. I mean, we have a mother and a father because the Lord had given us um, this mother and this father in the physical realm, placed us under their charge, under their protection, and we are to honor and obey them for things in the uh, physical realm. For example, when you're Mom and Dad say, hey, go clean up your room. You know, we should do it. When Dad, when you get a little older and Dad says, hey, go out in the field and pick some corn so we have some food for dinner tonight. Should do it, right? Um, we should honor our parents. So that's, you know, when they say, look both ways before you run across the busy street. Well, that's, that's good advice, you know. But um, that's the physical realm. Now, Paul writes in Ephesians 6, 1, Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Colossians 3 and verse 20, Children, obey your parents in all things, for this is well-pleasing unto the Lord. So, yes, we were to honor, which basically, you know, respect the parents. But uh, when it comes to the, when Jesus said, for I am come to set a man at variance against his father and the daughter against her mother and the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law, well, we're talking about the belief in Christ as the Lord, as Messiah. And that's basically Christ and Messiah is basically the, just one's Greek and then Messiah's Hebrew. Now, you got to realize we are spiritual beings inside a physical body. And in the resurrection, we'll be spiritual beings inside a spiritual body. We will be like the angels. But... Um, when it talks about parents and children being against each other, well, now we're talking about instead of physical things like obeying your parents, you know, cleaning up your room and, you know, watching for cars when you cross the street. No, 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 no. Now we're going into the spiritual realm. Uh, you know, let's take some an extreme. Suppose your father... Um, you're you're a uh, you're an adult, 
and you become and you're a Christian and your father in his older age decides to join the Church of Satan are we supposed to honor them and obey them when they tell you oh well give up give up your Christian faith deny Jesus uh, curse him and join the Church of Satan and the answer is no absolutely not we're supposed to love the Lord and honor him over and above our physical parents for example in Luke 14 26 it says if any man come to me now this is Jesus speaking if any man come to me and hate not his father and mother and wife and children and brethren and sisters yea and his own life also he cannot be my disciple now is he telling us to hate our parents and everybody else I don't think so I think this is just an extreme way of saying that we're supposed to put our love for the Lord up so much higher than everything else in this life that uh, I guess they use the word hate as an extreme because the Lord's not telling us to hate our parents and our wife and our children now we're commanded to love our children and our wives and you know um, we're even commanded to love our enemies our enemies not the enemies of the Lord we're not to love the enemies of the Lord but we're to love our enemies but it says that um, you know we're supposed to hate our own life also so you know when it comes to the Lord we're supposed to love him far more than our earthly connections or family in first John 420 if a man say I love God and hateth his brother he is a liar for he that loveth not his brother whom he hath seen how can he love God whom he hath not seen so you know he's not really telling us to hate our family no but when it comes to the Lord we're supposed to love the Lord so much and do his will that it doesn't matter the family just they don't even come into the equation basically especially if the family doesn't love the Lord also and there's gonna come a time when your own family members will probably end up turning you in to have you killed for your faith in Christ that's basically what I think this is talking about all right let's read Matthew 10 verse 33 on now Jesus is speaking here but whosoever shall deny me before men him will I also deny before my father which is in heaven so if we deny Jesus Jesus will deny us verse 34 Jesus says think not that I am come to send peace on earth think about that every uh, Christmas time when they uh, start singing uh, well I forget the name of the song but uh, peace on earth goodwill towards men uh, <laughs> think not that I am come to send peace on earth I came not to send peace but a sword for I am come to set a man at variance against his father and the daughter against her mother and the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law and a man's foes shall be they of his own household and I think the answer to your questions in thir verse 37 he that loveth mother or I'm sorry he that loveth father or mother more than me now this is Jesus speaking he that loveth father or mother more than me is not worthy of me and he that loveth son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me so we're just supposed to love the Lord far more than our physical family especially those that are unbelievers because there's gonna come a time 
when your family is going to be your enemy, when if they uh, if we live to see the man of sin, the son of perdition, the antichrist, the beast, if we live to see that, the great majority of the earth is going to follow the man of sin. And those of us that stand fast for Christ, our own families are going to turn us in to have us put to death. Read Matthew 24. I mean, it's plain as day, um, even though the Baptist churches can't find it. But, uh, yeah. But, uh, all right, so verse 38. And he that taketh not his cross and followeth after me is not worthy of me. He that findeth his life shall lose it, and he that loseth his life for my sake shall find it. So if you lose your life for Christ, for your faith in Christ, um, guaranteed ticket to heaven. Guaranteed. Luke 21, in verse 7, has an answer. And they asked him, the disciples, saying, Master, but when shall these things be, and what sign will there be when these things shall come to pass? Well, they're asking him, well, what's it like, you know, the end times? Verse 8, And he, Jesus, and he said, Take heed that ye be not deceived, for many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and the time draweth near. Go ye not therefore after them. But when ye shall hear of wars and commotions, be not terrified, for these things must first come to pass, but the end is not by and by. Then said he unto them, Nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and great earthquakes shall be in diverse places, and famines and pestilences, and fearful sights and great signs shall there be from heaven. But all these they shall lay their hands on you and persecute you. And he's talking to Christians here delivering you up to the synagogues and into prisons, being brought before kings and rulers for my name's sake. Yeah, for the name of Jesus, we're going to be brought before kings and in synagogues and in prisons. Verse 13, And it shall turn to you for a testimony. Settle it therefore in your hearts not to meditate before what ye shall answer. For I will give you a mouth and wisdom which all your adversaries shall not be able to gainsay nor resist. In other words, um, when they cast you into prison for your faith in Christ, don't think about what you're going to say. The Lord is going to speak through you by the Holy Spirit. That's basically what this is saying. There's a parallel account to this in Mark 13 and in Matthew 24, if you're interested in reading it. Um, all right, verse 14. Settle it, therefore, in your hearts, not to meditate before what ye shall answer. For I will give you a mouth and wisdom which all your adversaries shall not be able to gainsay nor resist. Here's the punchline. And ye shall be betrayed, and ye shall be betrayed, both by parents and brethren and kinsfolk and friends, and some of you shall they cause to be put to death. And ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. And that's happening now. But there shall not an hair of your head perish. In your patience possess ye your souls. See, this is what it means by, um, you know, parents against the children, and the children against the parents, the brothers against the brothers, the sisters against the sisters, the mother-in-laws against the daughter-in-laws because Christ is going to cause division and that's you know so in the physical realm obey honor your parents but in the spiritual realm put the Lord first and hopefully you have Christian family but if you don't just know that put the Lord first I hope this made sense, and I hope I explained it properly. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor to God the Father and His only begotten Son, Jesus, who is the Christ, in His precious name. Amen.